Hello, and welcome to Mac Gamecast, episode 13, a podcast where we talk about games, Mac games, and adjacent things. I'm John Carr, and today, Ted is with me. How you doing, Ted? Doing pretty good. Fantastic. Thanks for being here. Uh, we have nothing super special ta- planned today in terms of topics uh, like we have been doing for a while, or dev interviews. We we will loop back around to that soon in the next few episodes. Um But today I wanted to make it more gaming focused um, for a Mac gaming podcast. We're surprisingly unfocused on Mac gaming. So I've been (laughs) uh, so I've been uh, scheming, you know, like every few episodes or something. We should have a more game focused episode where we chat about other games we've been playing or a new game or in the or in the case of today, um, I want to carry over a format I have on the website um called have you played and it's like have you played dot 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 game name with a question mark um uh to credit the source i actually stole this idea from pc gamer um from their website um years ago i had you know they i noticed they started putting out a regular series called have you played and i couldn't think of a better name for it so i just stole their name shamelessly and you know (laughs) i'm so small time no one will notice um because it's really good. It's like a conversation, you know, and the idea behind it is you take a game that's older or even a couple years old, um, you know, year or two back even, or or an overlooked game. It's either like really old games, overlooked games, or, you know, something in the in between. And it's just like, have you played this thing? And here's, you know, what the person writing about it thought about it. So I thought to try and translate that into uh, audio form. And I thought it could make an interesting podcast because you can also cover more than one game. At a time, we could bring up two or three even, and uh, and chat about them, or uh, why they're fun or interesting or exciting, or like why you know, why today now in you know late 2021, um, you know, is this game still worth playing? Why is it interesting? Um, you know, because some games age, right? Some games were fun at the time, but aren't necessarily still fun if you were to go back and reinstall them. Um, depending on the kind of gamer you are, I guess we had a show about that, uh, episode two or three or something, but. Uh, today we have a couple games on the docket. I think I am going to talk about uh, Warhammer 40k Mechanicus and uh, Crying Sons, perhaps. I've got a big list. We'll see. Uh, Ted had a few games. Uh, what's on your What's on your list to chat about, Ted? Um, the 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 two I had actually thought about at first was um, a cute little game called The Dungeon of Nahubic. I believe that's the way it's pronounced. Amulet of Chaos, which is an RPG turn-based RPG. And the other one was just the Rise of the Tomb Raider, which is another one of the Tomb Raider series, which, uh, you know, which is a lot of fun. Nice. Okay. Well, why don't we, uh, I'd like to start off hearing from you. Um, I have played Rise of the Tomb Raider. Uh, I think it's a great game. And so we could have some more roundtable about that later. But I've only played a little demo of the Dungeons of Nahul, Nahul whatever. And then part of the name's the problem. You know, I actually, a quick aside before I let you talk. Um, a while ago for Mr. Ma- Mr. Macrate, one of his, um, like, new games release of videos, I remember mentioning this game and doing a little blurb about it. And I didn't know how to say the name. And somewhere on YouTube, there's, like, a five-second audio clip or something, maybe <laughs> ten seconds, like, how to actually <laughs> properly say it. Um but I don't remember because that was like a year or two ago. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I probably, you know, having played the game, if I had a better a better memory for sounds, they do say it in a couple, you know, in several instances in the game and part of the dialogue. And right. uh, I think it's Nahubic. So, right. you know, uh, I, I mean, that's, yeah. that's that's what clicks into my brain. But anyhow, it, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of a, you know, what, what really really got me interested in and the reason i would say it's just it's really playable is because it's just fun it's it's kind of silly the you have a party of um it's like you know a dungeons and dragons or an rpg type of game with a party of heroes except they're pretty much a bunch of losers <laughs> and they uh, they there's a lot of uh uh you know kind of um I don't want to say angry, but 
antagonistic interaction between them you know like this character will say that character's an idiot or you know you know why you know it's just it, there's a lot of this stuff but it's all done you know in good fun it's not you know mean or cruel and uh, some of the interactions between them you know when you're listening to the the audio bites or the voice you know the voice bites that they do for the game are just like really funny you just sit there and just start laughing because they'll give each other a hard time about some dumb thing or they'll make some sort of a snide comment about some stupid thing one of them did. But it's essentially, um, <clears throat> you know, you control the whole party, which you you tell them to go do something. You know, they there's a series of quests like there always are in games like this. And um, a little bit of battle. Um, one of the things that was interesting about it is um, there's an extra party member that you have to choose and it is based on the way you play um you you do a early in the game you do a a quest for each one of the three types there's a bar i'm trying to remember what they are there's a bard a paladin and a, and a, a priestess the three mm-hmm. that you uh, work with and you do you do a quest with them where you know for them because they need something or whatever and then after you've done those three quests then you you get to choose one of them to add to your party and it all depends on how you like to play and the i believe the quest that you do for them kind of gives you a feeling for how they what they perform how they perform and stuff like that but uh just some of the quests are kind of goofy you know they're <laughs> i mean you, you know there's i don't want to give away a lot of uh, the silly you know the silly stuff in there but you know there's one where you have to go find chickens that got lost mm-hmm. in the castle i you know there's you know there's silly things like that or go down to the wine room and get a bottle of wine type of thing you know some of that but there's there's a lot of fun stuff um there, uh, I really enjoyed the, the the fighting sequence, which were kind of basic, you know, not really difficult, so you didn't really have to worry about it. And um, there's a ton of stuff to look for in the castle, including a bunch of um, um, special things you can do if you figure out the puzzles. There's like uh-huh. statues that you have to align in a certain way, and if you get them lined up correctly, you'll you'll expose a, a, a chest of you know treasures, goodies, armor, whatever for the guy, for the for the characters. And like any RPG game, as you go along, you get a reward, you get equipment, and you get to, to choose whether this piece or that piece is good for you. Um, nice. Yeah, it's 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 a lot of fun. I I it once I started playing it, I I couldn't stop. It was one of those things where, um, it just it just rolled and with a you know the storyline rolled and you know you stop playing and then you say oh geez I wonder what's going to happen next. I got to go into this new zone and I'm going to learn another part of the puzzle and you you know you meet other NPCs to give you more of the story. So a typical game like that. A lot of a lot of silliness, a lot of tongue in cheek type humor, um, but uh, definitely keeps you uh, going and happy. So, um, yeah, I think anybody would like a kind of a lighthearted, easy to play game uh, would probably like something like this. So that would be my take on it. Right, not like one of those hardcore RPGs or brain burner like turn-based combat games or whatever right where well, you have to spend days and days trying to figure out all the possibilities yeah right. like really it, master more... the game systems or your intruders. right right yeah yeah this one's more of a you know with we just pay a little bit of attention to what they tell you as during the tutorial part which is the beginning and you'll kind of pick up how things happen <laughs> right and there's all types of things you can find in the dungeon it, it's really funny so um so anyhow, yeah, that's uh, I I rec- highly recommend it. I thought it was a real good game and uh, was definitely Mac playable, sixty four bit the whole ten yards. So yeah, I uh, I just was peeking at it and uh, apparently they've also released some DLC uh, fairly recently. I don't know if it's you know exactly what that is, but you know more game stuff basically. It looks like it's like ten bucks. It's usually kind of a yeah reasonable expansion level these days that adds just more stuff. I don't know if it adds any more characters, probably just more levels or new areas or something. I think there, yeah, there looked like there was one where there was a, a one one new 
level that you can go play on. You know, the game kind of ends at the end. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't know how to say it. It's it's like I don't want to give it away, but it kind of it, like you get to the end and it's like okay, you know, that's it. And, yeah. you know, the way they, they do the whole story is kind of like, okay, well, that's it. Goodbye. And uh, right, yeah. the, oh, and, and there's a couple false endings in the game, too. I should point uh -huh. that out. It was just kind of funny. You could do something really stupid, which I always like to try out some stupid things, as, especially <laughs> in a game like this. And you get this thing where you get this long thing about how you really screwed it up the game and everybody's dead. And, you know, you might as well go find another game to play. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. I got a real, I got a real kick out of that. I was like, oh, I got to try this to see what happens. <laughs> That's funny, right? Yeah. The the goal, yeah. yeah, the game's meant to be a parody of like tabletop RPGs, but of course, it's in a right. well, it's in a video game form and in a turn based combat form. Well, it's you run around in real time, right? And then the combat right. turn based. You run around real time. The combat is turn based, so you know you get a you you set up your guys. It kind of like you set up your where you want everybody to be. You get the ch and if you want to take a potion or something to start, you know, to enhance something or whatever, and then. You you know one group goes first and they get to do their attacks or movements and then you get to do your attacks or movements or uh, buffs or whatever you know there's all these different things you can do and then you know the magic flies the bullets fly whatever and um you know if the you know then they next turn happens type of thing so you you learn pretty quickly some you know things to keep you know, I, keep away from doing your the best strategy for succeeding <laughs> nice. so and once or twice you make a real i made a couple dumb mistakes and it was like oh man so it does <laughs> let you save it does let you save as you go which is something i like so if you make a really dumb mistake you can always just reload <laughs> right yeah that's, that's solid yeah yeah not too but, unforgiving that's good yeah but uh but other than that yeah it was it was the, the combat system is pretty basic and uh, it, it it doesn't take a genius to master it, which it just like I said, it's it's lighthearted, it's fun, it's one of these things you want to play something fun to keep you you give you something to do and enjoy it. You know, it will do a good job of that. It's not one where you have to sit down and study all the rules. So right, no, I I like those kinds of games not as a uh, like main source of entertainment, but uh, like in between certain games or or when i'm in the mood yeah for that yeah. something more lighthearted, which isn't all the time but it's certainly sometimes um uh, i almost think of them as like palate cleansers or something like i've maybe yeah. like, come off playing something much more intense or heavy or difficult and i'm like well i want to play a game but not like another one like that and then um something like this seems pretty appealing i think it's pretty reasonably priced as well i think it's like 30 35 dollars or something That'd 35 yeah um, yeah. I and I think fair. I think it was on special at one point, which is why I uh, um, why I up, yeah. picked it up. Yeah, I, I think it was on special. And I go, oh, look at this. That's interesting. I wonder what that's all about. <laughs> yeah, I think the next uh, Steam sale is supposed to be at the end of the month. So that's like Halloween sale. So it's probably only going to be spooky games. Um, but then yeah. they have a winter sale, which I think is in November, or December, or something, probably December. Um, right. It'd probably be on sale. It'd probably be on sale in the next few months. I mean, it's probably worth thirty-five dollars. Um, graphics I are think pretty it good. Audio is pretty good. Uh, the reason I noticed the game is because I heard Felicia Day was voicing the elf. Um, oh, okay. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, she's like an online geek actress persona person. Um, okay. She's fairly well known for various she things. Did... All right. She did she's the, the elf. elf huh? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so I, I know what her voice sounds like. <laughs> yeah. So I've seen a. Well, it's really what do you call it? Like, she's putting on a voice, like extra. Yeah. Cute. She's a voice like, actress. Uh, yeah. yeah. She's putting on like a ditzy elf kind of voice. <laughs> uh, if that makes it, because the elf's like a total doofus in the game. If D I recall. Yeah. <laughs> like, like a, a like a. A kind of a hippie, uh, you know, a kind of a mix of an elf and a hippie uh, flower girl type thing, you know. Yeah. Oh, you know, don't, you know, let's look at the flowers. <laughs> so that's why oh. I first, first heard about the game. I don't, I recall playing a demo, but I don't know if I played, like, was there a Mac demo? Did I play it, like, did I stream the demo or did I play it in boot camp? I don't even know because it was like a year or more ago. Um, yeah. 
I think it came out for them. Well, it says it. I've been looking at the uh, the light the store thing, and it says it was released in on uh, September of 2020. But uh, right, so a little, I, over, a little over a year ago. Yeah, there was some kind of demo back then. I think back then I was using a PC streaming service that literally let me have my own PC called Shadow, so I could just install anything. Unlike okay. GeForce Now, which only you you know it has to be supported with a specific game and it boots up the game. You don't get like a PC. Um, I think I played the demo through that because I don't think there was a Mac demo. I think there was only a okay. PC demo. But of course, yeah. it now has Mac support and everything. Um, it, it was on my wish list for a while. It was one of those games like if I didn't have a backlog, I would probably get it and play it. But since I'm still working on a backlog and trying to really avoid buying any new games, it's like looks pretty solid and i think i'd like it but i have this other stuff to play <laughs> yeah so that's where i'm at with that game but uh it sounds fun lighthearted, uh, casual but a bit of challenge and some good laughs and exploration um yeah, yeah exactly time, so. and and like you said it's a good one to if you're playing some real hardcore game and you need a break from it <laughs> it's right. a good one to fill in and give you just like laugh for a while and right. still be able to play so yeah, it's single player only, I believe. I don't think there's co op. Yeah, yeah, there's no co op right. on it. Yep. Um, right. So it's party based, but it's single player. So that, but that's also nice. Sometimes, uh, I sometimes go through phases where I play a ton of multiplayer games, and I'm like, man, I just want a good, like, solid single player experience. Um, right. So that that can be good as well. So this game sounds like could be interesting. Could to tick a a lot of boxes for people. I mean, um, from what I've what I've can tell from like reviews and um all that uh it seems well well reviewed it wasn't like some smashed hit but it seemed solid for what it is and a lot of people liked it um like critic me critics and players from what i can tell so um you know good for them i think it was a first time uh developer if i'm not mistaken i didn't actually who who made this uh it was from artifact studio artifacts studio i was going to say artifact studios um i don't think they've made anything else or let me check Oh, I think I'm there was wrong. another. Made I think there was an earlier version of this game, but I've never heard of it before. Uh, they've made a bunch of racing games before this, but only okay. since 2016, so they're fairly new. Okay. Uh, and they put out a couple like, like uh, cheap, like cheap, like like ten, fifteen dollar games, basically. Okay. Like smaller, bite sized games. So this was their first like foray into, I don't know, not triple A, but like double A or whatever indie ish yeah. something more than what they've done so i think they did a did a pretty good job i would say i think they did a real good job yeah i've yeah, yeah. the fact that it's mac supported again is just always nice uh, as we've said before oh, wonderful yeah ports and everything and this i think was an in-house port and um yeah so that's awesome shout out to artifacts studio for that one um uh, why don't we just take turns here? So I wanted to first talk about a game called Warhammer 40,000 Mechanicus, or Warhammer 40K for short. Um, people who know Warhammer will just broadly already know, like, there's Warhammer and there's Warhammer 40K. So the regular Warhammer is like the medieval fantasy version. And the 40K version is it's literally set in the year 40,000. So it's way in the future. Um, and it's all dark and grimy and sci-fi and... Um, Mostly dark and grimy. Grim dark, I believe, is the like general term. Um, but Mechanicus is an interesting subset of uh, focusing on uh, well, a faction of humans. Well, they're not really humans anymore. That's the point. They're mostly like rope, like replace their body parts with robots and everything. Um, so that's focused on uh, the Mechanicus. Like they're a, uh, you could almost. Uh, they're not quite, they're almost a religion. 40K is really weird. It has all kinds of religions and factions and tons of races because they're all kinds of aliens. And uh, even within the humans, there's tons of uh, different kinds of people. And lots of people are, what do you call it, um, transhuman. They've been, you know, radically genetically modified and implanted and all this stuff. But what's very interesting, I find fascinating about, like, I'm not going to go too much more about the lore before I get into the game, but. What I find very interesting is someone who's been a general fan of Warhammer and 40k, a little more leaning, you know, I've read some of the books, played other Warhammer games, you know, the Feral's ported the lovely Dawn of War 2 series, still works, still 64-bit, those are really good still. Um, 
But that just focuses on like the av- like the space marine guys, the big hulking dudes and armor and big guns and everything. So this is interesting. Mechanicus focuses on like these basically robot guys. They're you know um, they're almost cyborgs, I guess. A lot of them have like steel skulls and robot eyes and extra mechanical arms and all this stuff going on. But but they're not like the super strong you know superhero like marine guys. Um, they're more, you know, they fix machines, they work with computers and code and hacking and all this kind of stuff. Like, they're typically more like support units in the universe of Warhammer 40k on average. I mean, like a, a mega nerd might correct me on that if they're listening. Um, but what's interesting about this game, well, it's a turn-based, I should get out of the lore and move into talking about the game. It's a, uh, at its core, it's a turn-based, uh, you know, tactical combat game. Um but what's really fun about it is starting off with it has a really neat presentation. Um, the visuals, the music in terms of like being on your ship because you're on this giant, you know, tech ship to begin with. And uh, you can choose your missions, which is fun. You can choose um, what characters you want to bring on your mission, which is also cool because you can never bring everyone at once. Um, so you're exploring this old tomb full of uh, what's called the Necron, who are these like immortal undead jerks, basically, who have fused with, they're like techno skeletons, <laughs> if that makes sense. They have like really advanced technology and uh, <laughs> you, know, you can't ever really get rid of them. Um, so you're going through this tomb. So everything's kind of green and gray and this and that, but um the way the camera works and the visuals is like really seamless in terms of loading into missions and zooming in and you're exploring this tomb and in between not everywhere you explore is a combat scenario. Sometimes there's just a pop up with like you found a wounded soldier or you've come across a room that seems to have traps in it or, you know, oh, here's this interesting like statue or painting to study or like and it always gives you three choices, usually two or three choices. So you can pick how you want to respond to this scenario. Um and sometimes, you know, you can sometimes get extra loot or a bonus or, of course, something bad could happen. You could get injured or you could accidentally summon more enemies or raise the alert level or whatever, you know. So there's some, like, random variation there, which is fun. Um, and the combat itself is quite tactical, unlike the game we were just talking about. This one's definitely more challenging. It's mm-hmm. not, I wouldn't call it, like, hardcore, but it's not, it's not casual. It's somewhere more in the middle. Um, can definitely be pretty challenging. There's some really nasty enemies. Um, and especially like when you encounter new enemies and you don't know what they do. Uh, but you can often tell because they're usually like some horribly big, terrifying looking thing. And you're like, oh my God, what does that do? Um, <laughs> the game isn't horror or anything. Um, but then, you know, you're, you're fighting like undead skeleton dudes and they've got like, you know, some other scary looking guys, I guess. Um yeah, but it's interesting because you play these, uh, you know, you can upgrade each character individually. Each character, mean, like each uh, Mechanicus, basically. And I think you can have up to six of them. And they each have, you know, they all have different skill trees and stats and gear loadouts. So you can really create, like, whatever kind of squad you want. More melee-focused, ranged-focused, support-focused. Um, there's also kinds of stuff going on in the game because all the religions are real in the world and all the like blessings and prayers of the gods and everything, both good and there's chaos gods and this and that. But uh, I find when entertaining about the Mechanicus guys is that they have a great machine God and and it's real and it like grants them blessings and prayers and stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so they go around with like sacred incense and, you know, uh, there's a really funny and occasionally the writers put in like some memory stuff like you encounter, I don't know, like a loudspeaker from like the skeletons, the Necron, and it's, you know, it's blaring out some unholy dirge. What do you do? And one of the options is you can just pull out this big speaker and and choose to crank it up to 11 um, and like blast out your holy prayers to try and counteract it. So, you know, the turn it up to 11 reference was really funny to me. You know, it's like, turn it up to 11, counteract the unholy blasphemy or something, you know. <laughs> So it sounds really like religious, and it is, but it doesn't copy any particular religion. It's doing its own thing. So it's not like, you know, I don't think anyone would be bothered by that. Um, but the combat's really fun. The visuals are good. It's challenging, but in a good way. You know, I love upgrades and powers. You can choose your own, you know, ha- your squad. You can also uh, choose to bring along support units, which aren't mechanicus guys. They're like 
various varying kinds of troops, you know, um, like regular soldiers, like grunts, basically. Um, but there's, I think, six different kinds of them. Um, so you can choose to bring them along. Uh, but, you know, they cost money to bring along, so you may not always want to do that. Um, mm. And, of course, you can keep discovering new loot and weapons and items as you go along. And you can choose your missions. You can't do all the missions before you eventually run out of time because this tomb's awakening around you. And the more it awakens, the more dangerous it gets. And, like, big, bad, super Necron lords from, like, millennia ago wake up and, you know, they're going to kick your bum. So you can only explore so much before you basically have to bail, um, which means the games are playable at least, like, twice basically. And you could see, you know, different content, try different paths. There's also DLC, which has like a new skill tree and this and that. Um, but if you're a turn-based sci-fi, turn-based combat, tactical turn-based combat fan, I think you would like the game. If you're a Warhammer 40k fan, you'll absolutely love the game. Uh, the writing is, I haven't even talked about that, and I'll wrap it up with this. The writing is top-notch. It's phenomenal. Uh, all the characters, um, like the ship, you know, you have a commander, and there's like a medic, and a you know, a pilot, and there's a bunch of different characters that you don't play directly, but they're there, right? Like, they're in the in the story. Um, they all have, like, really well-written personas. They all have very distinct personalities. Uh, you know, some of them get along, some of them don't. Um, you know, some of them are really ruthless. Some of them are, like, more merciful. It's just interesting. So there's a lot of interplay between them, and each of them are actually in charge of certain missions. So if you do more of their missions, like, certain things will happen. You can get different endings as well, based on kind of who you choose to support through the missions which is interesting so yeah uh, good graphics good audio great combat replayable um i don't have any real complaints about the game minor nitpicks like some of the animations can take a long time uh I encountered a few bugs in the inventory screens like it could be hard to see certain items sometimes you wanted because there'd be like a weird overlay covering it um nothing that really prevents you from playing the game performance was good didn't crash or anything that i remember um yeah really fun game warhammer 40k mechanicus and uh i don't want to ramble too much more about it but um yeah turn-based combat fans warhammer fans um they haven't really done i think it's the only notable turn-based combat game and win the warhammer 40k universe most of them are either third person like shooters there's tons of you know real-time strategy games in the warhammer universe um yeah, so it's kind of the only like notable, well done one that's turn based, and also the it was very again I praise the writing, but a lot of people praise it for its writing, like really, um, what do you call it? Like in line with the lore, right? In the world, like wh the creators and the writers clearly had a, like a very deep and keen understanding of Warhammer 40k, and as someone as any kind of fan, that's pleasing. Or if you were to be a newcomer to that, you could like feel the like richness or depth of the world and the characters and stuff so um yeah that came out in late 2018 so it's a couple years old but really good game playable on mac um definitely recommend you check it out if it sounds you know like it might be the game for you sounds interesting yeah it's not too uh expensive either what does it cost i thought i had it pulled up 30 something like that 30 for the basic yeah, 30 bucks, and there's uh, also some DLC and soundtrack. Soundtrack's actually really good. I have it on my phone. Like, soundtrack's, <laughs> like, really good. Um, really like it. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, I played, I don't know, I think it, I put 20-odd hours into it or something um, to play through the campaign. Actually, I could check that. How long did it take me? I'm curious. <laughs> Ooh, Steam's being funny again. Mechanicus... Uh, 26 hours actually took me to oh, okay. play through the game. And I think I played as many missions as I could because you can, you know, you basically need to like find the big baddie at the end, but you can't just walk in. You have to like discover him. So I think I discovered him a couple missions before, like I could have gone and fought him earlier, but I played a few extra missions to get more loot and XP and stuff then went and fought him. But you're probably looking at like at least 20 hours, um, 2025 to play through a campaign so some mm. people prefer shorter games some people prefer longer games so i figured it was worth mentioning yeah uh, that's a good point case, yeah in case your uh play time you know so like kind of like we were talking about with uh the dungeons of nahul nahul whatever um <laughs> you know uh being like a lighter game but sometimes i also just want like a short game 
something that right. does play in five or six hours or 10 or something. But then sometimes I want like, oh, I want to get into this campaign. This is cool. And I, yeah, I want it to go on for 20, 30, 40 hours or something. So right, uh, right. Yeah, this is like a 20, 25 hour game. Uh, pretty cool. I think it's cool. But I'm a war, you know, I'm super biased as a like pretty big Warhammer fan. Um, but I still like, even if you remove that element of fandom from me, I think it's a very, it's like a very polished turn-based tactical combat game with a very good story um even if i wasn't a big fan it just makes me gush over it more because of how like the attention to detail and stuff nice yeah and uh what uh go back to you now that i've rambled on about that game what else <laughs> game would you like to bring up uh, i think tomb raider you mentioned we were talking about yeah the rise of the tomb raider that was that uh... was the second game in the reboot uh, yeah, I think it is. Yeah, it's a game in the reboot. Yep. Okay. And, uh, Tell us about Rise of the Tomb Raider. It's uh, well, <laughs> it typical Tomb Raider. Um, n- more, you know, again, every every version I've played since the beginning, they're always a little bit more graphical. That you know, the graphics are a little bit better. The story's usually pretty much the same type of thing, but. Um, I thought this was very well done. A um, lot of interesting story in there, and a couple little supply, uh, surprise twists to the. You know, I think the story was very well done. So it was, it was actually made the game fun to play. Yeah, I mean, it's a typical Lara Croft one where there's a lot of uh, motion uh, puzzles in a sense where you're, you're the important thing is to try to move from here to there to the other where. <laughs> right, environmental. Now, yeah, environmental puzzles, puzzles or you just basically hop, jump, whatever type of things, which is typical for the Lara Croft games. And and I always, I, I, I'm i not like one of the best players of these games, so I always consider the game, you know, the one million deaths of Lara Croft because, <laughs> you know, the only way to figure out a puzzle is to m- make a mistake, unless you're really, really good at it, and I'm sure there's people out there like that, but you make a mistake, she dies, you try it again. And you, <laughs> and you don't make that mistake, and then you come up to the next thing and say, "Oops, I should have let left, not right." Boom. Okay, try again. Right. <laughs> you know, it, but um, it's kind of, but the the puzzles aren't impossible, and mm-hmm. um, a lot of them are fun. And sometimes once you get into the, yeah, I found myself like later into the game, I kind of got a real good f- a feel for the mechanics and the physics of the game, and was able to do a lot of the you know, the jumping around and, and exploration stuff a lot easier than, you know, for, than obviously at the beginning. Right. Um, uh, you do, you know, typical, you pick up weapons and um, I think this one had a, a little bit more, uh, um, what was I going to say? Working with the environment, there was other things you can get from critters that were around and, other than just the searching for the little cash checks, uh, cash of cash you know boxes weapons or, or whatever, yeah, boxes yeah. and everything. There were there was at least one um, uh, NPC in the game at some point where you could actually trade with him to get. Uh, enhancements to some of the gear that you have, which I thought was kind of an interesting twist. I don't know if it's ever been in any of the other ones. I don't remember that. So, um, yeah, it was, it's a lot of, you know, there's good uh, things I liked about it. It's a good storyline. Uh, you, you you know, you get to go into all different types of environments um, as you're following the story of this uh, I want to see if I don't want to give away too much of it, but you're, uh, she's looking for something, and uh, obviously it's always some sort of amulet or talisman or some sort of a thingy <laughs> that's supposed right. to give give eternal life to whoever has it, mm-hmm. and and um, <laughs> so she's following these uh, the obviously the same story she's following the research of that her father had started before he got murdered and um so she's following the clues she got from his notebooks and stuff like that and she 
goes to all these different environment and she there's a, a pl another character in the book which i believe and you can tell me if i'm wrong you might know but i think the character was also in the previous game the one where it was uh just the tomb raider the last one of the reboot and um he seems to have He's just a good friend of hers and oh, shows up. Oh, yeah. In, yeah. I forget his name, but I know who you're talking about. He's like a yeah, large... Big, you know, large guy, yeah. Big guy kind of with long yeah, hair. Long, yeah. yeah. And, and I think he was in the previous one, too, which I kind of thought was interesting because they're not only creating her as a character that you you know you kind of learn about, but they've actually started creating other characters in her world that come back. <laughs> which I think it was like, it's just kind of like a lot of fun. It's kind of like when you watch a movie and or read a book where, you know, the characters show up again and you say, oh, yeah, I know that person. I know what he does or what she does, whatever. So that was that was interesting part, too. Um, yeah, I I don't know. You you said you had played it. Do you have any thoughts about it? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, quick aside, I was just checking. Uh, this was released April 2018 for Mac. Um, by Feral. Um, of course, it still runs on Macs now, 64-bit and all that goodness. It's well optimized, I think, for any any Mac from you know now or whatever. It's probably in the last five or six years, M1 machines, whatever. Um, and I think it's only thirty bucks as well. Easily goes on sale for like fifteen or twenty. Um, I mean, I paid full price from the Feral website. I like pre-ordered it. Um, mm -hmm. Sort of like in a moment of like extra support, Feral Interactive. Because I'm a big fan of theirs. Um, right. Please port more games, Feral. Um, <laughs> I've been really quiet lately. That aside, um, no, I had a lot of fun with it. Uh, I was a, uh, I was never a Tomb Raider fan earlier, like growing up. Whether it was her earlier games or even some of the quote unquote more modern ones they made, like in the earlier 2000s or mid 2000s. Right. Um, or maybe in like late. I think I forgot the last one that came out was probably 2008 or something. Um, I never, you know, I remember trying demos of them and this and that, and they were always just like, eh, not my thing. The 2013 reboot, like, totally blew me away. Um, really slick, really well done, phenomenal graphics, awesome sense of exploration, and action was good. And so Rise of the Tomb Raider basically carries that on. Um, uh, I love any game basically in a, like, snowy or northern setting. So the <laughs> game opens on, like, top of a giant snowy mountain and all the initial areas are all snow and then you know you're hunting in the snow and deer and making fires to keep warm and fighting like <laughs> big ass bears and other scary things um oh, yeah, going bear. through frigid <laughs> water and um no I, I think the game's really well done it's an excellent action adventure game with like a real emphasis on adventure um, you really feel like you're going on this like awesome epic journey with Lara, and yeah, there's some mis mystery and like mystical elements there as well. You know, hunting this like you know treasure that's supposed to give you eternal life. Um, you know, and of course, like there's development of Lara here in game one. Of course, she was you know the newbie archaeologist thrown right. into this island and you know forced to survive. So she's she's tougher now. She's a little more battle hardened. Um, <laughs> <laughs> a little more grown up, but still like a little naive in some cases. Um, yeah, and there's some more supporting characters around, like you mentioned. So there's a little more like um, depth to our world. All the previous games, more or less, were just kind of all about Lara. Uh, and the characters right. were kind of incidental. Maybe some of those later ones they made had some more characters and I think maybe some villains or something. But um, So I wasn't the biggest fan of the story at the end. I preferred the first game's like lighter touch of the mystical. Okay. Um, by the end of this one, it kind of goes full, just like full tilt, mysticism, magic, whatever. Yeah. Uh, wasn't the biggest fan of that personally, but it's still like a very well done story. Um, you know, act voice acting is really good. Script is pretty good. Um, you know, Lara f like feels like a believable character, and you feel like you're playing her, and again, like going on this journey with her, and. Um, so many times I'm, I just stopped. I took like so many screenshots of that game. Like <laughs> I think even now the graphics are like really good. Um, oh, they're, not only they're of the superb, environment, yeah. but like Lara herself just looks, I'm not talking about like her, how she looks, but in terms of like the visual fidelity of the character, like uh, her clothes, her face, her hair, like really um, just fun, like really top notch, really well done. So the game feels like 
not only through like its set pieces and action adventure, but the graphics are so well done and the audio is really good. It just and the music and everything really draws you in. Like you're right. in this world and in this mountain valley or, you know, in this cave or whatever. Um, yeah, you know, and uh, I think as a, like a sequel to the first game, um, I think it largely improved. Um, I forget like what, I think I might've even reviewed the game on the website at some point. I know I reviewed the first one. I don't remember if I reviewed Rise, um, but really it's just kind of a couple story elements I didn't like. Yeah, otherwise, pretty much everything else was improved. Um, like the amount of environments you go through is pretty varied and interesting. Uh, you know, her upgrades are really cool. Her weapons are really cool. Story's good. Um, not a lot of complaints. I think it's the best one they've made uh, in terms of the reboots. Yeah, I have to agree uh, with I, that. Yeah. I don't like the third one really at all. The last one they made, like in 2018 or whatever. Or I guess more 2019 for Mac or whatever. I don't remember what it was called. What it was oh, called. I don't need... Yeah, I, I don't I, I don't uh, think I played that one either. Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Shadow, um, okay. I do have it. I tried playing it. Um, and it was just not, just not as good. I don't know. Huh. Um, that character, the guy whose name I can't remember returns, your friend. Um, okay. So he's like yeah. even more involved and that was cool. Um, and, you know, visually again, a step up from Rise of the Tomb Raider even. So phenomenal graphics and everything, but it just wasn't as, in I thought the story out from the get-go was like ludicrous. Really? Um, and I didn't like the setting as much. It's all like jungle mostly instead of like okay. mountains and cool stuff. I don't know. Yeah. So between like the story and the setting and I was just kind of turned off. Um, and I guess hmm. maybe after playing two of the games, I wasn't like really motivated to play a third, I guess, because it's like, I think you'd have to be a really diehard fan to play like all of them. Now, of course, I didn't <laughs> play them in a row. I played the first one back in like 2013 or 14, whenever Farrah released it. And then the next one, like, two or three years later so there's a pretty big gap um but i don't know they didn't really bring anything new to the table other than the setting like different setting and everything and you know you're still doing a lot of stealth action stuff uh there's only a couple new things where you can kind of hide in the environment or like paint mud on yourself or something um you know th but there wasn't any like radical changes um the only kind okay. of radical thing was the story. Basically, she ends the world by accident, like in the beginning, and causes like <laughs> massive, like biblical level, like um, you know, catastrophes and like whole cities, like the world's uh, like getting destroyed by some ancient Mayan god or something. I don't even know. The whole thing was just kind of ludicrous from the start. And I'm, like I said, I already had issues with um, those elements coming out stronger at the end of Rise of the Tomb Raider, but they were still fine. This one goes like whole hog out the window out like let's just go to crazy town in like the first hour and that was really a turn off for me okay so i tried playing beyond that i played another hour or two i think i played like three four hours of the game total mm -hmm. of like a 20 hour odd game is what they usually are right um i just i just couldn't do it i just gave up and uninstalled <laughs> okay um <laughs> but you know and I, w I admired the graphics a lot um i had fun you know sniping some dudes i think i fought some jaguars or something in the jungle um but it's just i don't know i didn't it wasn't for me i guess i was wanted i don't know i don't know what i wanted but i wanted a, something different out of it either more new mechanics or maybe a different version of the story i you know it just of course trilogies tend to wrap up right like can you really complain that a trilogy can continues the story like the third game in the series i guess i would have hoped that like the story kind of wrapped up in rise and maybe they did something different Right, for right. for this one, but it just continues and Trinity's still the big bad guys and they always have like some global army of endless mooks <laughs> like in the jungle randomly or so you know, it's just I don't know, it got a little I'm it stopped trying. being as believe it just it broke my like uh, what do you call it, suspension of disbelief or like my immersion level and Yeah. Th okay. th yeah, something like that. Huh. Um, I, I yeah, I'm trying to remember it, it, it going way back to the original um if they're tr if they were try, I remember one of the games in the original series back at the beginning that was very heavily jungle. I remember playing that one, but I don't remember very much about it. A uh, long time ago, like the early games, not the reboots. The early, yeah, the early games, yeah. The right. you know, and I I wondering if 
maybe they were just try where they were trying to follow the the original type of stories with their reboot, you know, that type of thing. But I, I, I don't know. It was just something that just when you were talking about the Jaguars, <laughs> I was right. thinking, well, I, that sounds familiar. And I know I haven't played this, you know, that one. And um, it just reminded me that I've, you know, because I've played some of the earlier ones a long time ago. Right. Um, quick aside, just quick extra mention. There's also like a bunch of DLC for Rise of the Tomb Raider. I think I guess there is for each game. Yeah. But Rise of the Tomb Raider had some pretty fun ones like. This whole Baba Yaga thing. The Baba Yaga was a lot of fun, yeah. Yeah, um, that one was really good. I don't remember if there was more, but there must have been some other things. Uh, Trying to look on my phone. I'm not. Well, yeah, I'm looking at, yeah, I'm looking at now there was um, Cold Darkness Awakened, which is another um, one. I, I'm trying to remember if I did that one or not. I think I might have. I think I bought the whole. I think it was on special. I think I bought the whole, uh, you know, the whole package because the Baba, Baba Yaga one was in there, and I ended up doing it kind of a, kind of in the early part of the game because right. I happened to be in the right spot. <laughs> yeah, there were some more. There's extra like challenge tombs which give you more goodies and like some yeah, yeah really clever like puzzle environmental puzzle and challenge tombs were cool. Yeah, and, um, some story things, but yeah, great game. Um, not so oh, fond of the third one, but you know it's still pretty well rated. I think Rise is actually the most highest rated one of of the, all the three, though. So it would seem, I think, in general, most people think it was kind of the peak of the trilogy in general. Um, Crystal Dynamics, who made the game, developed the game. Um, they've moved on. Now they're making superhero stuff. You know, they made uh, the Marvel Avengers game or whatever, which wasn't particularly well received. There's no Mac version. If there was, I'd probably play it. Um, <laughs> So there don't seem to be any, like, you know, no time soon, I think, will we be getting more, like, you know, Lara Croft games. They'll probably reboot it yet again, like, five or ten <laughs> years from now or oh. something, um, as they seem to do with these kinds of games or big IPs. Um, yeah, but overall, big fan of the series, the reboots. Um, I think they're very solid. You know, just because I don't like Game 3, don't take my word for it, right? I have some biases with, like, the story and setting. If you don't care about that stuff, go check it out. Um, but absolutely, anyone who likes, who, want, who, like, hasn't played these games, like, if you want an entry point, I'd still recommend playing the first 2013 reboot. It's I think it's only, like, 10 or $20 at this point. You can get it yeah. anywhere, like App Store or Steam or whatever. But if you're only going to play one, I would recommend Rise, which we've been mostly talking about. It's so good. Right. Rise, of the Doom Rise is real good. Yeah. yeah I really it's enjoyed a that. really good spot. You don't have to have played the first game to like know the story or whatever either. Um, yeah. So if you're only going to play one, I say play Rise. If you're up for it though, I say check out the original, the 2013 reboot, just Tomb Raider, straight Tomb Raider, and then Rise. And if you really want more, well, then go check out Shadow of the Tomb Raider as well. Um, that one just wasn't for me. That's all. But yeah, it's great games. Um, I really like that. There's like a real emphasis of adventure in the games, not just action, right? Some right. games are labeled action adventure, but they're much more like action games with small splashes of like adventure exploration. This game is kind of like more half and half. Right. Um, yeah, very you know, good. And I really appreciate that about it. You know, it's, it's good fun. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's right. There's also like an endless mode or like a survival mode and all this stuff as well. Where you just have to go and like survive in a winter valley or whatever, and you have. Like, yeah, I didn't new, try that part. Yeah, there's like I think hunger and food and heat or <laughs> heat ratings and all this stuff. So you have to you know have a certain amount of fire or like furs on you and this and that. And <laughs> um, there's some cool stuff there. Um, and uh, shout out to the Feral for their optimization. The game runs phenomenally well on Mac. Like yes, crank the graphics. Good good FPS. Good resolution. Um, yeah, so good stuff for rise um gonna wrap up the podcast talking about another indie favorite of mine called crying sons this is a um game from i think what late 2019 uh, i don't really know the developer i mean they're called alt shift i don't know if they've done anything else um it's a uh, so crying sons is a tactical roguelite game and uh you know it's a pixel game so i normally don't like pixelated games like that art style but this one's done like so slick and so well that uh really drew me in i believe there's a demo if i'm not mistaken there is a demo yeah there's a demo yep yep there's a demo and that's what got me to buy the game because like holy moly this is so good um 
So you can check out the demo. The game's otherwise 25 bucks. There's also a iOS version if you'd rather play it there. Um, but yeah, so it's a sci-fi game in which basically the story, like the premise, this isn't a spoiler. It's like right in the description, start of the game. Um, you're woken up by this, you know, some sort of robot. You know, you're in a, a cryo tank or a tube or whatever, and you, you know, cough, cough, and you spill out and like, what's going on? And so you've been woken up by this robot and apparently tons of time has passed. You don't know how long you've been like asleep, basically. And the empire you were previously a part of, you're like previously a big shot commander. Everything's like totally gone to ruin and uh, destruction and like what's going on. Like, so it's kind of a, a layered mystery um, as you go through the game. So it is a rogue like or light rather not li there's two categories which can be confusing there's rogue like and rogue light i think i don't necessarily confess to know the difference beyond rogue light is more well on the light side hence the name um uh, really so this is kind of a blend of um faster than light and what else um i'm not sure what other game to compare it to but the story takes a lot of inspiration from dune and foundation mm -hmm. which you might pique your interest as someone who was i believe just watching foundation the other week yeah um so in terms of its like setting um yeah it's heavily inspired by dune and foundation so big on sci-fi and mystery and like this you know vastness of empires and dynasties but also like, corruption but also technology and um so there's a lot of interesting stuff going on for a rogue like most rogue like slash rogue lights um are very heavy on action uh, but this game is actually uh, like primarily a story, like a narrative game. Honestly, very oh. like so it's very big on story and narrative. Um, there's no voice acting. It does just kind of that murmur, murmur, murmur thing a lot of games do when characters talk. A lot mm -hmm. of like indie games do. But of course, there's text on the screen. Right. So this commander, you get this cryo tube, you get this ship, and you you know you get some officers, and you have this robot advising you, and you go around, and you get to um, similar to FTL. Um, you only have, like, you have, uh, there's so many systems you can go through, and you can choose your route where you go, and how many, like, places of interest you visit in each system. There could be a planet, you know, there could be a abandoned ship, there could be, you know, some satellite broadcasting news, there could be a ground mission. There's no, like, actual ground combat or anything, it just goes to, like, this little, um, like, commander overlay screen or something, where your troops run around on the ground, and you get to tell them to do different things. Um, but it, there is some turn-based combat in the game in space. Um, you know, like your ship is there, their ship is there. So kind of similar to FTL, your ships fight, but primarily actually your little fight, like fleets of fighters fight. So you can have up to three or four of them, I think. Well, it really depends on your ship. Um, there's a bunch of different ships. So mm -hmm. what I like about it over something like FTL, which is of course a total classic is, uh, every time you complete a sector, there's five sectors or six sectors total. Um, and then the game, you know, you'll reach the end of the story. Uh, you unlock a new ship. So you can then immediate, like, you don't have to do anything special. FTL, you only unlock ships by doing, like, obscure, arcane, like, challenges and, and choices. And then, like, you unlock things. In this game, you just unlock them per sector. So you can immediately play the next sector with a new ship, which is really cool. I appreciate oh, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you could have, like, a different gameplay experience without, like, basically grinding the game or looking up guides, like... How do I unlock this ship? You know, it just gives them to you. So that's really cool. Uh, I appreciated that a lot. Um, so the combat isn't particularly hard. Uh, I think you can even pause it, but then it's real time otherwise. But it kind of takes place in the space grid and your little fighters zoom around and you can direct them. And there's kind of this rock, paper, scissors thing going on where you have like fighters and bombers and some other drones or something. And, you know, drones are good against bombers, but bombers are good against fighters and fighters are good against drones or something like that. I, <laughs> I don't have that right. But, you know, it doesn't mean they can't fight each other. But if one side's favored, you know, you're probably going to lose or the favored group of ships will probably win. But ships can take damage, right? So they'll be less effective. And uh, your ships can also fight each other. So there's this fun thing where you're shooting you know, both at the enemy ship and their fighters while also directing your fighters and your ship and stuff, you know, lasers and missiles and shields. And so you get this fun, like, not necessarily epic, but like pretty solid, you know, space battle every time that happens. Um, the game's pretty honestly darn easy on the normal difficulty. Like, 
almost a snooze um except for the final combats like really turn it up turn up the heat and i was like scrambling to finish at the end <laughs> but there are harder difficulties you can also play out if you want more of a challenge i was there for for the story so i think um the combat's pretty fun but not the main draw i would rate probably rate this game like 60 percent story 40 percent like combat and like general exploration adventure stuff not adventure but like explore like exploring the systems and figuring out this or that and so there is a ton of story like i said inspired by dune and foundations very heavy sci-fi themes but it's also it's just very well written it's actually very compelling because you're trying to you know what happened to this empire and who are you because you've you've like a lot you some of your memories are messed up and you seem to you occasionally remember things mm -hmm. and your like robot pal seems to know but he won't really tell you so he's kind of shady kind of sus <laughs> um you know and your crew but your crew's really cool and they all have their own personalities as well you know like your uh like your troop commander like really hates bandits so anytime like or, or pirates or whatever so anytime a mission comes up he's like send me send me and he wants to go kill them all um <laughs> but what's neat is you have different uh officer your officers your crew have different specialities and there's i think nine different ones like you know, there's like science and tech and but also like uh, stealth and weapons and a bunch of other things. So each officer will have two or three of these like tags. Mm -hmm. So building your crew out in like diverse ways is important. So then you can go and resolve encounters like there could be a hostage situation on a ship. And if you have like a character who's like an assassin, he can be like, I'll take care of it, sir. And you can just send him over and he's like, slick argh, and just takes the guys out. <laughs> this all happens like from your command deck and you just see it as like text and little you know messages and stuff um or there could be some you know locked you know uh, whatever what do you call it vault or something on a, on a ground mission or on a on a space station and if you have some tech or something you could unlock it and like get a new weapon or a new fighter ship or you know stuff like that or, of course if you don't have it well then you fail the challenge or you can't even choose the option so there's quite a lot of uh random events in the game uh, the story is really good. There's different ships, and they drastically change the way you fight and even explore. Um, so it's not like minor tweaks having a different ship. It's actually like very different. So that was really cool. Hmm. So great story. Uh, again, really slick UI, kind of like 40K or uh, Mechanicus. The way it um, – basically, it, there's like no loading screens. The way everything transitions and zooms and shifts around is like super cool. And totally draws you into like the game experience in the world. Um, also, shout out that there's three like radically different endings, um, mm. which is neat. And you don't have to do like there's no like karma system or like good or evil or anything. It's just <laughs> there's this story like how much of the story have you uncovered? Because there's kind of some like seemingly innocu like innocent side quest. You go and it actually turns out to be like. I don't know, encounter some secret agent who like knew you from before and has like some big secret ah. you know, to uncover. And you can even occasionally capture people in your brig and like go and interrogate them and all this fun stuff. There's like little things. Um, but yeah, the story gets pretty intense by the end, I got to say. And all the endings are like really, really, like, really interesting. And if you go, I after I finished it, I was kind of blown away and really stuck with me. And I even went and like poked around online and there's some pretty hefty debate about the game's endings on like Steam or Reddit and stuff, <laughs> um, you know, uh, pretty interesting stuff. So yeah, if you want like a cool sci-fi roguelite with some like solid space combat, but mostly like a really cool story, uh, check out Crying Suns. You can play it pretty much anywhere, any computer. It's, you know, it's low, low spec, low system requirements, has an iOS version, Steam, App Store, it's all over the place, uh, not too expensive. I, I bought it. After playing that, just it has a demo. I mean, it's it's free. Just go check out the demo. Play the um, demo, yeah. Yeah, not also too demanding on your time. Let me see how long it took me. Come on, Steam Library, Crying <laughs> Sons. Uh, it took me twelve hours to play. Oh, okay. Uh, and that was like really doing everything I could in a single run. That was a single run. Um, <laughs> the story, like to me seeing as like they give you each ship like i didn't really feel compelled to play again i could have played again and seen a couple different things or tried like you know similar to ftl you come across shipyards and you can buy new crew and buy you know new guns and this and that so 
I could have played some more and gotten more out of the game, but really I felt very satisfied with a single run. They, you know, you see most of the story and, you know, they give you each different ship. There's no like secret extra ships to unlock. So I appreciated that. It's kind of a one and done, more or less, um, mm-hmm. with the option to play a bit more. But, you know, there's no like, they don't like dangle story bits like you have to go and replay over and over to find out or again, like hidden ships and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. I don't like it's a, Some players probably love that. Personally, I hate it. I hate feeling like I have to grind the game to like discover the story or yeah. <laughs> you know get like mo- like check out all the content or whatever. Uh, that that doesn't appeal to me. So I really appreciated the way this game was designed. Um, it delivers a terrific narrative with some very thoughtful endings, like very thoughtful, honestly. Cool inspirations, really slick graphical design, solid enough combat, cool music. Um, Crying Sons, check it out. Sounds good. I thought I might catch you with like the Dune and Foundation inspirations. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ah, well, no, that's yeah. Um, oh, yeah, obviously a fan of both. So yeah. It's also like yeah, again, not too hard to play. Mm-hmm. Um, so I found it. It was um, not. I don't want to call it a visual novel because that's not even close to what the, it's an actual game. Mm-hmm. But I felt like I was playing this, like experiencing this really cool story where I coincidentally got to like make decisions and fight in battles and choose my crew and like get new ships but also on this like grand narrative that unfolds chapter by chapter in really compelling ways because like each each sector you play through gives you like a ton of answers but then also raises more questions all the way to the end and in the end you do get all the answers there's no like big (laughs) question marks so like they keep up the tenseness and you have these like whoa aha moments but then like oh my gosh what's that i want to find out so you just want to keep playing and (laughs) i remember coming you know i'd come home from work or whatever and i just hop on and i'd be thinking about the story and where it went next and you know it's really solid really solid yeah that sounds good yeah yeah so those four games have you played um Dungeons of, I'll just call it Amulet of Chaos. <laughs> yeah, Amulet of Chaos, yes. Amulet of Chaos, uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider, Warhammer 40K Mechanicus, and Crying Sons. Uh, honestly, Crying Sons is so good, I wanted, like, I was really impressed by the devs, or I almost hope they might make, like, a Crying Sons 2 or something. I mean, the story wouldn't allow for that, honestly. Like, it does wrap up the story. Um but the game, like the set, the story and setting was really compelling, and the world and like the con, you know, the game was fun enough that I wanted more of it, but not necessarily more of that game, if that made sense. Because the story, mm-hmm. you know, I experienced the story, but um, yeah. Or I hope maybe they might put out like a DLC or something, but they didn't. They just made an iOS version. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, but very compelling game. Um, but. I'm a sci-fi fan specifically. So, you know, even if you're a narrative fan or like a space combat kind of fan, um, well, I guess space combat goes in hand in hand with sci-fi. You got to like sci-fi. If you like sci-fi story, you'll like this game. I'm pretty sure. Like, I would be shocked if you didn't. Mm -hmm. Um, That would be my conclusion on it. And uh, that's all we have to say about those four games. Um, We'll see if there's any like feedback from listeners or maybe even other team members um if this is a fun format you know we'll be able to check it out at some point with casper or lily or sam and stuff Mm -hmm. Uh, we're not going to do this obviously like back to back every time but maybe once a month or something like that um or every other month or whatever makes sense we can do an episode like this of course with only two of us it's easy to talk about four games it's taken us about an hour and a little change if there's three or four of us here we'd probably only get time to talk about one game each which would be (laughs) yeah Um, great yeah, of course, I, I really rambled on about some of my games. So they were a little more lore story heavy, so I feel compelled to describe them more. <laughs> right, <laughs> Try right. to sell their interest. Um, yeah, so that was all. Uh, but that'll wrap it up. Thanks for listening to this uh, very gamey episode 13 of the podcast, and we will see you next time for episode 14. Don't know who will be there yet. And uh, thanks again for coming on, Ted. Awesome, yep. as always. Good to be here. And yeah, great to have you. And we'll see you next time. Have a good one. Night. A big thank you to Kevin McLeod for the intro and outro music. Be sure to check out his library on the web. You can find more episodes of our show on our website, macgamecast.com, or in all major podcast directories. 
If you enjoy the show, please consider commenting, following, or sharing. Thanks again for listening, and see you next time.